So we're here with a cloud ready here at the Education Conference BET yes. in London. Here we are. So who are you? I'm Boris Smith. I'm the product director for uh, Neverware, which is the company that makes Cloud Ready. And we saw Chromebook sweep the nation in US K-12 and wanted to bring the ability to install the same operating system on PCs and Macs up to 10 years old. So, so you bring this you are conquering Europe, right? That's right. And this is our next conquest what is from never, NYC to London. Neverware. It sounds like you never want to... Uh, Software. Yeah. The goal was to imply that uh, you can use the same kind of software for longer and longer to keep your hardware working for longer. So that's part of what Cloud Ready is for. We want you to be able to get an operating system that makes good on the hardware you already have, so you don't have to go buy new hardware just to get a new operating system or a new way of managing. It stands for you'll never buy a new laptop. Sure, yeah. It stands for a lot of different things over time. Because uh, actually, um, what's amazing is you can buy the first generation MacBook Air, right? Mm -hmm. It can't even be operated to the new versions of the OS X. We won't update that version, but it runs your own? Yeah, it should install Cloud Ready. Almost any laptop or desktop from up to nine years ago will run Cloud Ready, especially Intel based stuff like the MacBook Air. Yeah, all the way through 2008 and desktops even a couple of years earlier. And what you'll find is that Chromebooks and Chrome OS are designed to run on such underpowered lightweight hardware that in the end, even very old laptops and desktops run very quickly because they have these fast Intel and AMD processors. How old is this one? This is a Dell Inspiron. This is only about three years old. Um, it's one that we used to use in-house. Yeah, it is brand new. But usually Intel suggests people buy a new one already at three years yep. they slow it down yep. with meltdown exactly. and with other stuff right? they ship a couple of bugs and they start to tell you that you need a new version and they start to ask you whether or not you want to take the time to install windows updates which can also slow down a machine or cause issues that you don't anticipate cloud ready and chrome os update every six weeks with security and feature fixes and we add new hardware compatibility to cloud ready at the same rate so that things are always moving forward and you don't have to think about it so it was like a, everybody knew it that, for example, Apple was slowing down the iPhone, but it was like proven recently, and, and Apple was like ashamed in public. Does Intel do the same, like slow down because they want to protect their old batteries or something? You know, I have no idea. My guess would be that it's so hard to update the firmware or the operating system on Windows machines until recently that they wouldn't have the option to. Most people install Windows XP or 7 and just leave it there for as long as they can without touching it. Part of what this operating system and other things like Chrome OS are about is making sure that updates become automatic and always on. So you get the full Chromium OS access, like it's the open source version. It's the full Chrome OS, right? Uh, I mean, it has all the latest stuff that Google does in their Chrome OS. It's yeah. in Chromium also. We run about six weeks behind Google in order to maintain stability and keep our changes stable and persistent. Otherwise, it's the entire Chromium OS open source project base. It's important to note that that doesn't include the Android app capabilities, uh, which are not open source yet, but do exist on some Chromebooks. I don't know. What are they waiting for? I'm not sure. Sure, but they're not developing in the open. Otherwise, the Chromium OS project and the Chromium browser are in the open, and that's the experience that you get on these devices. Flash is okay? Flash is okay. We offer you a way to install it, but you don't have to if you're uncomfortable with that plugin being there. So that's a little different than Chromebooks, but it works the same way. What about all the video codecs? Video codecs are provided as a plugin in the same way that Flash is, as is the Widevine DRM module. So if you want to watch Netflix, you can set that up and do it. Nice. So totally Netflix, Amazon, everything? Everything. And, um, so somehow you captured the area of being the coolest and the best Chromium stuff, right? Sure. I, Is that maybe. Right? There's not too many different options. There are a couple people who were just as a solo side project providing Chromium. And um, about three years ago, three and a half, when we started developing this, we saw the need for something that would integrate with Google management because the security and management of this platform is really powerful for schools. So that's why we're at BET. Uh, and that's really where we've made our stand as being something that allows you to manage these just like Chromebooks. At one point uh, a few years ago, I, went, I forgot the name, something Hackster or something, some kind of framework. Uh, yeah, Hexer. Uh, for a uh, USB uh, dongle mm -hmm. to install the Chromium yep. from that. Uh, so, so you just make it better and smoother than any. Does yeah, it, Google we, doesn't do that on Chromium. That no, works? Google yeah. does not. Their team doesn't have the stated intent of providing compatibility with generally uh, non-Chromebook hardware. It is true that they have some Chromium boards that will work on x86 and on AMD machines, but in the end you have to build it yourself 
and you have to worry about the updates on your own, or you can do something like Neverware Cloud Ready, uh, which is available both for schools, licensed and managed, or can be used at, in a home edition completely free for as many machines and as long as you want. So home edition means you don't get to have that um, thing that actually Google charges for, yep. the, the thing where you can manage many Chromebooks. Exactly. Google's device management, which is something that they charge per device for and works the same on Cloud Ready's Education Edition, uh, is not available on the home edition. But if you're just using one or two machines, or it's for your personal use, the home so edition is a great you're option. Access to that management thing, mm -hmm. and the same support. one as in the Chrome OS. Yep, same. So the same management the tools. tools. Yep, and they show up right for side the same by side. Price as in the Chromebook. Or? Uh, Google sells the licenses. We actually help customers get access to them, but that's not our product. We just sell Cloud Ready, and we let uh, resellers and, so you and have Google your own sell license. those management. Is yeah. your license Cloud Ready is licensed, license. and then you also need like on a Chromebook a management license. How much is your license? license. Our license uh, comes in a couple different options. It's all in US dollars right now, but you can purchase it for $15 per device per year or $59 on a one-time fee per device. Uh, we also have a district-wide site license option for $1 per student. If you'd like to convert a lot of machines, that tends to be our most cost-effective option. So, uh, maybe, uh, so we're right here at the Google booth. So you're speaking with them a lot, but I'm just thinking, uh, what's it called? The Google uh, console thing? The Google admin console. Google admin, console. the Chrome, ad, Chrome OS admin thing. Mm -hmm. They should partner with you that people just pay that price and you get half of the money or whatever. You know, and uh, Google doesn't need that money. Uh, you know, I've tried to talk to them about those things. They're all very interested, but it's a big company and they move a little slower right. than us little guys. So it's just bits on the server, it's already, they, they can just, you know. That sounds true. But what we like to point out is the cost of managing other devices and other platforms tends to even far exceed what Google is asking and whatever is asking. So the best place to start is to start going more cost effective. And over time, we've partnered with Google. They're now our largest investor. We hope to make advancements in the partnership to make it easier for people to choose this platform. So people search the cloud library, they go on everywhere website, and there's a thing where people can click and check uh, what models are supported? Yeah, we have but actually, you support models. much more than those models right there. So, what, exactly. what, what, at what, at which point do you list it? Uh, so, we, any machine that we have in house that our QA team looks at and maintains compatibility from update to update every six weeks, we list on our official supported list. But hundreds of other models work, and we add more all the time. So, it's important to just give it a try. With the home edition, you can even boot off a USB stick so that you never have to worry about erasing data until you're sure you're ready. Do you have a system in your office where you can automatically update the model and stuff? We automatically update click. things on our QA team, but test. the Chrome OS update is so easy that that's what we use. So we let the updates happen automatically just on a side server. Um, we also do a lot of automated testing to make it simpler, but in the end, good old-fashioned human hands make the difference, and that's what we spend a lot of time doing. So uh, does it run great on a 2 gigabyte RAM or even one? Two gigabytes of RAM is what we recommend. One will usually install and work, but it isn't what we consider to be the best experience. Um, anything with two gigabytes of RAM and that's in Intel or AMD processors in the last nine years should run just fine and will usually install okay, so, perfectly. So I would recommend people go on the, uh, uh, so for example, this is completely separate. So right here, people should go on a, like a, on a Gumtree website in the UK. It's like an eBay. And you can uh, you can order a 2008 uh, laptop for less than a hundred dollars, and this this would run great. And it right? Uh, the R61 on there for a hundred dollars or sixty pounds is an officially certified model. So that's just an example of the 250 different models you can get with a guarantee that Cloud Ready will work. And there are tons of others on there. And actually, the performance is not too bad compared to like a modern. Absolutely. Yep, because they put Pentium and Celeron processors and all of those. So even these Core Duos and Core 2 Duo processors from eight, nine years back tend to be pretty fast and have a lot of horsepower. Probably a little bit noisier with their cooling. Yep, the fans are loud and the batteries are a little shorter, but otherwise you get a great experience. So this one, I just went on Amazon and I bought a six cell battery for like 10 pounds. So you could just buy a totally new battery for $15. And then you have seven hour battery life. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the MacBook. Yep. The, Mac, the first generation MacBook. For $100 or $150. Mm -hmm. It's like, actually, it's faster than whatever. The Mac OS is yep. the experience. It's yeah. actually great, right? Yeah, we love MacBook Airs. We have a couple on the certified list. We use a couple in house ourselves. So if you can find a used or cheap MacBook Air, if you know someone who's moving on from theirs, 
don't let these machines go to waste. They work great. They just need a better operating system. Got this one, I, I saw that you were not yeah, able to so dual boot Windows uh, because it's legacy. That's correct. So legacy BIOS machines won't dual boot. You have to have a UEFI BIOS capable machine in order to dual boot. We do mark those on our certified list, um, but you're always welcome to try one that's not on there. Most laptops have UEFI now? Everything made in, say, the last uh, five, six years will have UEFI, and uh, a few machines older than that will have kind of experimental or early versions of UEFI, some of which... Why can you support Because uh, Ubuntu and Fedora and stuff, um, they, they let people dual boot, even legacy BIOS. Why don't you support that? So Chromium OS is built to make updates as simple and scalable and rapid as possible, and that means it has 12 partitions by default. So in order to have a 12 partition system and then add Windows to it, you have to be able to support large numbers of partitions, and that rules out a lot of legacy BIOS systems in the implementations we are looking at. So to provide a consistent dual boot experience, we chose UEFI. So it's for having uh, automatic updates, yep. security updates, exactly. meltdown security updates. Yes. Yeah, we've started rolling out uh, as many of the Meltdown and Spectre fixes that we've seen as stable. We continue to look for both Linux kernel and Google side OS and browser fixes that will help mitigate that risk. And because of the architecture of the OS, we expect to be able to ship them faster than anybody else. Did you run an Octane benchmark before and after the update? We haven't, we haven't yet. Uh, so I don't know what kind of difference you'd see. But it, d it should be less because the crossover between user space and the kernel space is a little bit smaller. That's part of why the OS is already more secure. But we haven't done the benchmarking yet. We're mostly focused on getting the security changes out first and foremost. I'm just guessing here. I'm thinking the Windows is going to be 10% performance uh, la uh, loss, but you might be just 2 or 3%. Yeah, I'm and hoping so. And I think uh, when we have the chance, we'll probably do some benchmarking and post it on our blog as a follow-up. So. So how many cloud-ready users do you have in the world? We, uh, no, it's not a secret. We support about 110,000 individual student seats um, in the U.S. and around the world, mostly in the U.S. right now. We also have, in terms of our free version, over a half million unique machines that have powered on cloud-ready at some point in the last two and a half years. So, yeah, we're always excited to see more people using it. Even if you're just going to check it out for a day, it's worth taking a look at so that you know it's out there. You said you are, what's your role? What's your I'm the are director the of product here. So I'm not the founder, but I've been working with the Cloud Ready team, uh, kind of connecting engineering to what people want and helping make sure everything goes. Uh, we don't have a CTO, but I work closely with our director of engineering, and um, we're always out there talking to people and working with our team. Uh, I would say that the hardest thing that we run into is the fact that um, there are a lot of different variations of hardware out there, and there's a big distance between folks who want to use the oldest possible hardware and some folks who want to use the newest possible hardware. Enthusiasts tend to be either very interested in ancient kit or very interested in the newest thing they can find, and those tend to be different. Uh, but we've worked hard to do a little bit of both, and we're continuing to try. <laughs> It's, we're based in New York City where there's not a lot of space, so we probably will not get into the business of boxes moving out of our space. But we would love to work with a reseller. Sure. Just buy up all the old MacBooks on eBay. Sure. Just buy them all. Send it back out. And then send them out with cloud ready and make hundred bucks in each. Yeah. Well, Chromebooks are pretty expensive, so you'd have to convince everyone that a brand new Chromebook is uh, not what they need. Uh, I think we maybe need to wrap up. I've got.